Thank you. There is one more person. Oh, uh, that's really loud. Okay. Where is Monet Gray? Hey. Give it up for Monet. I'm guessing poetry. Before I sit with your kids while you're uh, doing that, just to, if they, if is there okay? Yeah, sure. Say hi. Uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna sit where mom was for a minute, okay? So, um, <laughs> this poem I'm going mom. to recite is actually based off of a true story um, that has happened to me a couple of years ago. So, I just wrote this poem, just reflecting on that, and this poem is called You Never Know. In 2016, I remember in December, my car wouldn't start. The key couldn't do its part as I tried to ignite the ignition with all of my strength. My heart couldn't take being stranded and abandoned. And I was being outlandish as I stood in the parking lot begging for a hand. It's hard asking someone for a boost, for a jump, for a spark. See, it was dark in that parking lot and I didn't know if I could help or not. I had my three-year-old in the car and my two-week-old sat with her. And did I mention it was December? Yes, the weather was bitter. I shivered as I stood asking if anyone was able to lend a hand with the jumper cables. My mind was unstable. And what if the tables was turned? Would I lend a helping hand to that woman or man that needed help? Mm -hmm. Damn. See, you never know who you help. You never know who you aid. You never know who you assist, uplift, or save. Ma'am, could you please help? Sir, could you please stop? I'm stuck in this parking lot. See, my car won't start. Ma'am, hey, please help. Sir, sir, please stop. I'm stuck in this parking lot. See, my car won't start. No kidding, I asked about five people for help. And none could help that day. And I was waiting and debating if I should call AAA until I saw a young couple coming right at me. They didn't walk past me. They stopped and asked me if things were okay. I felt my face turn red. I said, no, I'm stuck here. My car battery is dead. Do you have jumper cables? I need a boost. I need a spark. It's so cold. It's so dark over there. My car is parked. So the guy ran to the car and the girl, she stayed with me. She comforted and consoled me. It was like she prayed with me. She made sure I was good. He came back, popped the hood, put off the red and black clips, and he did what he could. As we were outside waiting, they were so patient. Never rude or degrading, they weren't evasive. They used genuine help, they never thought about self, and I honestly thank them with every ounce that I felt. And this part right here is gonna make your heart melt. One year later, in 2017, I remembered in September, the first day of school. Yes, I am a teacher. I stood at the doorway, my hand extended to greet a bunch of five-year-olds. And as one boy walked in with the biggest brown eyes and the biggest smile, and to my surprise, the same couple in the parking lot that brought me to tears is the parents of that boy that I'll be teaching that year. Oh. Wow. So you never know who you help. You never know who you aim. You never know who you assist, uplift, and save. You never know who you meet. You never know who you teach. And that situation taught me you never know who you reach. So I made sure with him, I used genuine help. I never thought about self. And every time I hugged him, I hugged his parents to express the feelings I felt. Thank you. Are all of your poems like that? Are most of your poems like that? A lot of my, all of my poems are like Then every single one of them could be a phenomenal book or a phenomenal song. Because they're very lyrical. Yes. Speaking of that, I am in the process of trying to put together a bunch of poems. Um, I am, I just finished my 10th poem. I want to have a total of 11 in it. 
Uh, it's called Lyrical Biblical Tales. I'll never forget as a child, I would always, you know, go to church with my mom and they were always give me Bible stories and I would just always think about the villain in the story. Like, you know, I, everybody, they told me about Samson and Delilah, but I would say, what did Delilah actually say? I know she said a lot more than what was, what was in the Bible. Like, what actually happened? And I would think of Mary and Joseph. Like, what did Joseph think about when his fiance was pregnant? Like, what's going through his mind? There's so many, so many Bible stories. You think of Job. It's, it's, it's so many I can um, explain. So if you want, I can say one, one of my poems. I can do the Samson and Delilah poem. I just finished writing it. I don't have it memorized, so I have to use my phone. Okay. okay. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say this poem. It's called um, Delilah's Side of the Story, and it's based off of Samson <laughs> and Delilah. And again, this book that I am in the process of writing is called Lyrical Biblical Tales. My name is Delilah. And here's my side of the story to Samson. His love made him do whatever I command him. The Philistines tried to reprimand him and ban him, not knowing only a woman's touch is what bans him. My name is Delilah, a temptress, enchantress, a conniver. I shoot my shot secretly like a sniper. All of these qualities qualify me to get hired. Speaking of hire, the payment was fire. Five Philistines offered me to retire. Turn that down, <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> 1,100 shekels of silver from each of the Philistines was what they proposed to me. Multiply 1,100 by five is the actual amount it was supposed to be. Samson did whatever to get close to me. Never doubted if he was devote to me. It's crazy how this man killed the lion with his bare hands, but he could never break his hold from me. Speaking of hold, some might say that my actions were bold. But I don't care, because if the truth be told, that kind of money will turn anybody cold. There's always a villain in the thesis, but who would turn down 5,500 pieces? That's a lot of silver, believe us. That's more than what they gave to capture Jesus. <laughs> My name is Delilah. Giving them up, all it took was a briber. And if you want to know the true insider, I'll explain how I became the most famous enticer. <laughs> Samson! Come here, Samson. Listen, I heard you had a secret, and if you truly loved me, you wouldn't keep it. If you tell me, I promise, I won't leak it. I just need you to share. Baby, I need this. You said you cared, and if every word you meant, let me know how you acquired your great strength. If for me, you will go through great lengths, tell me how you could be captured and not be in defense. You know this man looked at me and told me, if you bind me with seven green whips that would hold me, I wasn't sure, but he said it so boldly and looked me straight in the eyes and that's what sold me. I got seven green whips that was never dried, wrapped them up and made sure he was securely tied. I told the Philistines, come inside, go and hide. When he goes to sleep, I'll call you and you got your guy. I can't believe Samson had the nerve to lie. He popped that string off so fast, he ain't even pry. The Philistines did nothing. They didn't even try. I was so mad I looked Samson right in the eye. You have a great sense of humor. <laughs> Me trying to entice you? Nah, that's a rumor. Listen, the seven green whips, I'm guessing that was just a joke. So uh, Samson, let me try a different approach. I was told you were a big, strong man that killed 30 men with his bare hands. You know, I heard you killed a thousand men all alone and knocked them all out like you were Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're the only man known to kill a thousand men with the donkey's jawbone. <laughs> now, nah, I'm not trying to stroke your ego, but there's one thing you've got to let me know. How'd you get so strong? Please tell me, and also, what can I do to make sure all of your strength goes? He said, if I get new ropes that was never used, he will lose his strength and become a regular dude. I tried it out, but of course, none of it was true. I didn't know what to do. I was left so confused. 
Babe, why aren't you confiding in me? What are you hiding from me? What are you trying to be? So when I can't trust, you're defiant to me. How can you claim you love me when you're lying to me? Listen, take a seat, because now I'm going to seduce you. We can make a baby, multiply, and be fruitful. Make you feel youthful, do whatever suits you. But one thing that's crucial, I need you to be truthful. What's your secret, Samson? Just talk it out, because if you don't, all of this going to walk on out. <laughs> so Samson looked at me and said, all I got to do is weave the seven locks of his head. So I made him lie down on the bed and fasten his hair with a pin attached to the web. And when he slept, that's when I called the Philistines. Mm -hmm. But before they came, he fled with the pin of the beam. Another lie, he told me. I was Philistine. I don't mean to be mean, but I'm about to cause a scene. Samson, with you, I can't win. I'm tired of demanding. You're not understanding. You lied to me each time, three times. Forget you. I'm chucking up the peace sign. This whole time, I was acting all ladylike. Now you are about to witness my crazy side. Oh. Every day I pressed them. Every day I stressed them. Asked the same question, made them all depressed then. Had this obsession. Yes, I kept guessing. I wasn't going to stop till he gave his confession. I annoyed him. There's nothing that I didn't try. I belittled him from feeling like the strongest guy. I nagged him till he wanted nothing but to die. Finally, he broke down, and this was Samson's reply. It's my hair, Delilah. My strength is in my hair. If you cut it, I'll be weak. If my hair wasn't there. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Delilah. Seductress, sorceress, a liar. Messing with me? Should have thought about that prior. Give me my money. Now I'm ready to retire. I'm not ice cold. I'm dry ice. Meaning if you touch me, I'll burn you. So think twice. Do what I gotta do. If the money's right, name your price. I'll cause the strongest man to live his weakest life. My name is Delilah, and that's my side of the story to Samson. That was fantastic. So thank you so much for um, My name is Lone Gray. I don't know if you have social media like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but you can um, type in. I go by Testimone. So it's like Testimony and Monet put together. Okay. T-E-S-T-I-M-O-N-E-T. -E so if you're interested, you know, in following me, you can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Give a big hand to Monet Great, please. Please come back. <laughs>